picture this. It's 2011. I've been a year in London in my life. My YouTube is at 80,000 subscribers and I create a teal, unreal, purely blue makeup look. And if you can't tell, it's this look I'm wearing right now, a rehashed version of a 2011 classic that lots of people seem to really enjoy on my previous channel, Teal Unreal. So I think it's time to have a little trip down memory lane and experience some makeup nostalgia. Personally, I really, really love the combination of blue and black. I've always been attracted to cool tones and I absolutely love that stark, dramatic contrast. It is my absolute favorite. I hope everyone did have a wonderful Halloween and now join me in the run up to Christmas with a few selections of videos, starting with today, a flashback to the past. So let's begin, shall we? Let's cast our minds back to 2011 and get on with the makeup nostalgia tutorial. So, first things first. In around 2011, because I had blue hair, I always found that contours would just look muddy. No matter what kind of color I would use, it would always just look bitty, muddy, and kind of weird. And I always felt like even the colder contours pulled really warm on my skin. So I used to do this trick. And if you have blue hair, maybe you can do this too. I'm not sure. 2011 was an odd time. I used to contour with pink blush. So I kind of tried to emulate that a little bit today. I've done a darker sort of softer, cool toned pink contour as well as put my blush on the outside of my face here. Now this is something I actually want to put in to my everyday makeup from now forwards because it I feel like it just looks really lovely especially in the viewfinder it just looks I don't know it just transfers really lovely on camera. During this time for foundation I think that I was using MAC full coverage no that's a lie it's not full coverage MAC studio fix fluid in the shade NC15 and I used to mix it with MAC face and body in white and that would illuminate it to my skin tone that it was because actually NC15 is pretty dark for a lightest shade range. At least NC15 used to be the lightest they did. I think now it goes all the way up to NC8, I think. I haven't checked in a while, so you just have to take my word on that. And then I used to set my skin with either powder foundation or just a heavy powder. And that would give me that little bit extra coverage just to have a full glam look. So today I have actually just gone in with what I'm usually using for foundation. So I now have two options in my arsenal for different types of makeup. So if I was going to do this look for an event now, I would wear Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation in the shade 1C0 Shell. This foundation is the bomb. It photographs beautifully beautifully and it lasts all night. I think actually this is my absolute go-to when I'm going to be on camera, when I'm going to be at an event to have pictures taken, anything that involves me being on camera and other people will see, I will be wearing this. However, in saying that today, I'm not actually wearing that. For my in-between looks, so something that doesn't require as much full coverage, something that's nice to wear on a day-to-day -day basis, I actually really like the CYO Long Lasting Foundation. Now, I actually got this recommended from, I never know how to say her name, it's The Taylor or That Taylor. Uh, she does Foundation Fridays and Foundation Reviews, and she said that this was, like, phenomenal. So I picked this up from Boots, and I have to agree, it is beautiful on a daily wear basis. It's just beautiful. I'm wearing it now. I team that with the infallible More Than Concealer, Concealer by L'Oreal in the shade 323 Fawn, just for under my eyes, across my forehead, and down my chin. And that gives me all the coverage I need on a day basis. And of course, I will always set my foundation. I very much like a matte finish. And even if I want something a little bit more satin finish, I will just finish with a finishing spray. How many times did I say finish in that sentence? Ugh. Do you like my new skull glass, by the way? I actually got this from Tiger Tiger in their Halloween collection because they were selling them for a pound and I could not believe it. They are actually glass. I was spooked. Quite literally. <laughs> so that is the foundation uh, base idea genuinely explained. So now I'm going to go in and start on the eyes. So a lot of the products um, that I used in this makeup look don't exist within my collection any longer. So I'm gonna try my best to recreate some. Actually, I think I might have one or two that I still have that I might use. So let's go in and put a bake down just to prevent any eyeshadow fallout. For this, I'm actually using the Revolution baking powder in lace. However, I don't really recommend this powder. 
I don't feel like it actually sets your face. I mean, maybe that's kind of quite good for a baking powder because you don't want your whole face to feel dry AF. In fact, I'm not sure why I'm putting some on this eye because I'm only gonna do this eye first and then do this eye off camera. So the look Teal Unreal is probably one of my most favorite looks. I love the color blue. I always have done and I always will do. So my actual hair color in the picture is turquoise by Directions. And I used to love the idea of playing with contrast or playing with uh, complementary tones. So either I would do something completely outrageous and pink to go against the turquoise, or I would go fully turquoise and just really live with the blue. And that is exactly what I'm doing today. Taking the shade Anya by Illamasqua. I really don't know if this exists anymore, unfortunately, but this is like a really cute, very, very bright, pale pastel baby blue. Gosh, that was quite the color description, wasn't it? I'm gonna use this as a transition. So the difficult thing about doing pure icy blue looks is you don't wanna muddy them by putting down other colors that can interfere with it. You kind of want that pristine blue. First of all, I'm just going around the crease like any normal transition color. I used to love doing these really huge eye looks. And because I didn't have eyebrows back then, I used to be able to just draw my eyebrows wherever I wanted and then fill in the spaces essentially. But I can't do that anymore because now I have to be a sensible adult and actually have some semblance of eyebrows. So I'm going to take this blue all the way up to my eyebrow at the front of my eye. So at this section here. And that way it helps create the illusion that I have more space to put eyeshadow. With doing any winged shadow look, what you actually need to do is something like this with your brush. You just need to continue your bottom eyelid line all the way up and out. You shouldn't Really go further out than that because it can start to look a little bit weird. So what were you doing in 2011? In 2011, I kind of was just sort of really starting my adulthood journey, really. I had moved to London in 2010. I was living my best life with turquoise hair, doing YouTube. I think actually I just hit 80,000 subscribers when this picture was taken on my previous channel. I think now it stands at 145K, but it hasn't grown or anything. Not that I've been making content for it anyway. So with this color, I'm just going to roughly take it around the crease and up to my, kind of up to my brow bone. It's, I'm leaving a little bit of space for a bit of highlighting later. The interesting part about doing makeup on YouTube is it can be very, very easy to just one day wake up without any inspiration and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to be doing for a makeup look. What am I doing? My content requires it. Ah, uh, I need a video. And I found myself in that situation Occasionally, not all the time, occasionally. So the way that I actually ended up coming up with this original look, this uh, Teal Unreal original inspired look, was actually to break my boundaries a little bit with creative inspiration. So I remember when I was living in Holloway, I said to my housemate, who was Sinestra at the time, I was just like, I need some inspiration. I need some inspiration, some new inspiration for makeup looks. What can I do that's really inspiring to me? Where can we go? What can we see? What can we experience that will make me feel a little bit more, you know, energized and excited? And I said, let's go to the Natural History Museum. So the Natural History Museum in London, if you've never been, is basically natural history. So they cover things from like sea creatures to extinct dinosaurs, lots of plant life. We've got meteorites, all these exciting things there, but they actually have an amazing precious rock collection. So they have all of these elements, all of these beautiful rocks that have loads of different colors, shapes, finishes like matte and shiny and black and glossy and all these exciting things. And I remember I loved this rock that was black, blue and white and I was just so enamored with it. I can't even remember what it's called but I can see it in my mind's eye and I remember thinking I need to just copy that color scheme. That little rock that has all of these blue tones in it and these dark eerie spooky cool tones. I need to recreate it as a makeup look and so I ended up taking lots of pictures of it going home and just thinking about it for a few days. And that's how I came up with this teal unreal look. I think that's enough transition shade. If I keep applying more, just the whole eye is going to be transition shade. So I don't have any of my other old school colors that I would be going in with right now. So I'm going to take the EYN palette and go all the way down to here to the blues. And I think I'm going to take this color here, which is Pacific Dreams and see if I can create a very loose, deeper crease shadow because I'm going to tidy it up later with my iconic silver pigment by MAC. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's such a beautiful blue. Yes, immediately. I love it. I love everything about it. Give it to me now. 
I actually did a handful of other blue looks on YouTube at the time. I remember I did Winter Frost, a Winter Frost, a 3D Winter Frost look, which was inspired by, what was her name? Queen of Blending, I think it was. Does anyone remember her? Gosh, this is quite the nostalgic adventure, isn't it? So I really liked this idea of like eye illusions and being able to create shadows that create this sort of like 3D effect. I loved doing that. I used to find it really difficult because of my eye shape and realistically my eye shape hasn't changed in the last sort of nine years. Is it nine years? No, eight years. When I was teaching myself makeup, so this was before I just moved to London really, in between 2006-ish to 2010, I'd always sort of come across these really old school ways of doing makeup that were very much like, don't do blue eyeshadow if you have blue eyes because you shouldn't match your eye colour. You should contrast to give it, you know, life and excitement and make them pop. And while I do agree with that from like a fundamental glamour point of view, never put rules on yourself with makeup because you never know what you'll find out and what you'll discover and what you'll enjoy. Like, we live in such a cool time now where everyone really gets to experiment with makeup as much as they want. And those rules are just arbitrary, really. I mean, unless you're doing like really basic glamour makeup for like a news presenter, just go wild with colour. Experience it. I mean, saying that, the older I've gotten, the, the less colour I actually experiment with. Um, I don't really know why that is. I think it's just because I've become a little bit more serious as I've aged. Now I've gone into my third decade of existence, it's kind of like, I feel like I should be taking things a bit more seriously. But it is nice to play with colour. Like, these are giving me life. I absolutely love these colours. So to help blend this darker blue out a little bit, I'm just going to go into this colour here, which is called Paradise. And I'm just going to blend that up into the transition. And the on the upper edge of that darker blue, just to really give it a seamless blend. Gosh, I feel like I haven't done makeup like this in a very long time. If any of you watched my previous channel, I'm assuming that maybe a lot of you did, because this was around the time that I was doing androgenetics and things. What got you into my channel? What was the video that made you go, oh yes, I absolutely must subscribe to them. I think with this kind of a look, all the different types of blending brushes are required. You need a small one, a medium, a large one, a creased one, and a flat top one. I mean, you don't, but it helps to have all of those. So I'm now going to go in with this color Stormy Night here. Now it does look a little bit on the purple spectrum. So I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to 100% like it, but let's just bite the bullet, shall we? Let's just bite the bullet. This is a recreation, not an exact copy. So I want to kind of keep this, it's already far too purple. I absolutely hate it. So I'm going to go over that with a MAC color. Now I think I'm gonna use this one. Is that the one? No, that's not it. Give me a second. I have too many eyeshadows on this table. What is this? What is this? I'm looking for, what am I looking for? Some of my former glory maybe? That would be cute, wouldn't it? So I'm going to go in with this color from MAC, which is called Plumage. Now this is kind of like a dark green blue color. And I feel like this would go much better than this purple mess here. So I'm just going to completely cover it up. Again, only keeping it in this tiny area here. I just feel like it will add that little bit extra dimension. Oh, that's instantly better. That's much more, much more the look we are going for. So YouTube really, really changed the makeup game. I really, really remember back in this time of 2010, if you were a super pale person like me, or just really into makeup, I mean, people weren't really into makeup like they are today. I think it's so much more of a, an accessible market now, which has, you know, its benefits and it's also has its negatives, just like anything when it becomes more mainstream, I think. So the hardest part of my makeup that I used to do was actually finding foundation and concealers to match me because I had no interest of appearing darker than I actually was. That was the hardest thing that I ever found. And I know that this, this doesn't just apply to pale people either. I think people of all ethnicities and all skin tones struggle to find, you know, like an ideal match. And I don't know why that is. I think like it's time for makeup companies to like get together with that. I think it's become a lot better in the last few years, but Back in 2011, it was still all aboard the struggle bus to, to I'm an orange lady. That was very much, you know, what was going on in my life. In fact, I remember actually speaking to Wayne Goss years and years and years and years ago and asking him if he knew of any super pale uh, foundation brands or anything. And he immediately recommended Kevin O'Quan. But even there, I think it was the, skin, is it Skin Architect? The Kevin O'Quan Skin Architect High Coverage Foundation or whatever it was called. And it, it was nice, but it was still too dark for me. And I still suffer with this problem now. Like my foundations, I feel like they look good, 
but it is it is a struggle bus because also a difficult thing that I think a lot of pale girls will find as well is that sometimes makeup just doesn't look very nice when it's done pale so when your foundation and everything is done pale to match your skin tone it doesn't have the same effect as someone that's slightly darker slightly tanner more warm toned than if you're just a cool English rose type of person I'm going to go back in with my Anya color just on a blending brush this time and just sort of pack it on to help lighten up this inner corner area. Oh, I love it already. It's not very far, but I really love it. I love these colors together. I think they're so, it's so nice to have like a monochrome look of like a single color, but all in different shades. I, I think it's so effective. I'm going to just go in with this white lies color in the very top here of the EYN palette. That way I can kind of keep it all on the same color scheme. If it's plain white, usually they kind of appear a little bit cold on skin tones anyway, so I think that's like appropriate really. Where are all of my flat top brushes? There you are. Whenever I've lost something, I'm always like, where is it? As soon as I ask where it is, it's like, boom, there it is. I see it, it's right in my eyeball. I think for this look way back in the day, I actually used the Sugar Pill Taco, I think. I think I might have even used a lot of Sugar Pill for this entire look because those were like the only people doing like super fun experimental colors. Oh, I love it. Look at that blend. Yes. For something a little bit different, I'm going to update this look a little bit. So this is a sparkly black by Kiko Cosmetics. It's one of my absolute favorite black eyeshadows, actually. I think even sparkly black is my favorite color. Black with like that really sort of iridescent oil slick kind of spilt oil. Ah, I love it. Black rainbow, my absolute favorite. So taking a really, really skinny blending brush again. This is the Charles Fox 81460-31, which looks like this. I'm going to do basically what I just did with the darker blue and just begin to sculpt, really sculpt that crease. And the contrast of this black against the silver lid color that I'm going to do in a second is just beautiful. So way back in 2011, I actually used to stream on a streaming website called StickCam. Does everyone remember that? It was like hugely big in the MySpace days and then kind of bled a little bit into like the YouTube era. It was StickCam and then I feel like it went into Periscope. And me and Sinestra used to have our desks set up like almost in the same room. We had a massive lounge at the time actually. Let me just set the scene for you. We had this massive lounge. Her desk was here, my desk was here, and we had like the lounge space in between us. And we would just pop a laptop in the corner just so you could see both of us and we would live stream getting ready as we were going out somewhere and it was it's some of the best times I've had in my life actually the amount of fun that I used to have in that house and I look back so fondly in those times with like they are my golden years they really are I was doing well on YouTube I was doing well with my friends group I was learning my craft on makeup World of Warcraft Cataclysm had just come out it was great I always used to feel that the drugstore makeup so things from like boots or super drug were always just naff there was no pigment it was just naff the blues were always like eh, eh. It's like, mm, not really that interested. Nowadays, everything is so much more pigmented. The whole high street like makeup game has completely transformed since 2011. So this has always been an iconic staple of my makeup collection and it still remains an iconic staple in my makeup collection in this day and age. This, I have actually decanted it so that I don't spill the whole tub everywhere, is the MAC Silver Pigment. That's all it's called, Silver Pigment by MAC. I bought one of these back in, it must have been 2010, and it has lasted me until now. If I pull out the actual, where is it? Where, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think it is, look, it is still practically full. I have had this for nine years, nearly. It is still almost as full as the day that I bought it. Now that is a good makeup product. Probably not a very good business investment or business model, but it's a good makeup product. Now the key to this section of the makeup is sharp lines. Back in the day, we didn't do this concealer cut crease nonsense. We used to put the work in and just blend, blend, blend. I've done it again. Where is that brush? Honestly, I think there she is immediately. So essentially I've taken the MAC Silver pigment and packed it all the way over my lid up to this this dark line here. Because I have deep set eyes, when I go like this with false eyelashes on, you literally can't see any of the silver. So I have to take it up a little bit higher than you might have to if you have a, a flatter eye area. I honestly thought that I would learn to love my deep set eyes, but um, 
I just don't like them. I feel like makeup looks better on the eye when your eyes aren't literally like at the back of your head. So I am hoping that when I get FFS, it will reduce those a little bit because that's exactly what I want it for. Now the lid space is complete. I'm going to start on the underneath of the eye. For this, I actually had a lovely care pack. Ooh, a lovely care package sent to me from a friend in America. And included in that little package was the ColourPop BFF Creme Gel Liner. Looks like this. Now I have not used this before, so it's kind of going to be a little bit of a first impression. Uh, but I, ooh. Oh, I like that. To get my blacks to be absolutely black, I never used to wear jet black above the eye. I liked it to kind of have a little bit of softness to the black, if that makes sense. But underneath the eye, I used to just ham it up as black as possible. And I used to layer cream products. Nope, the other way around. I used to layer powder products on top of cream products. So that is exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to apply this liner. Oh, that is nice. Oh, it's very smooth. And just roughly smudge it underneath the lashes as well. Taking my tiny little Charles Fox blending brush, I'm just going to smudge this down a little bit just to give it basically a base for the rest of the black eyeshadow that I want to put on top of it. Now this can kind of be a little bit messy, but messy in sort of a structured way. Does that make any sense? Do makeup terms make any sense outside of makeup? Like, could you go to a construction site and be like, do it in a messy way, but also in kind of a not messy way? Hmm? Actually, this is a beautiful eyeliner. It smudges so well. I'm really surprised. Great. So I have something that looks like this. Now this is very, very MySpace. Very, very grunge. Going back in with the EYN palette and the Pacific Dreams color, I'm going to smudge this blue into the black and down. Marrying a black and a blue color together is just, it does something to my soul. I don't know what it does, but I just feel so happy. So back in 2011, I think also because I was like a little bit lighter than I was now or than I am now, I feel like my eyes didn't bulge as much as they do now. So I could actually take my eyeshadow down a little bit lower on my face. But nowadays, because you know, a little bit heavier, a little bit of life has happened. I don't feel like I can go as low on my eyeshadow underneath my eye anymore. But let's just do it for the sake today, shall we? Like, do you see what I was saying earlier about the black into the blue? It just looks so pretty. I love it. Following the line upwards like that. To blend out this blue even further underneath the eye, I'm going to take the color that I used earlier, Anya, and just blend it further down so that it's a little bit paler. A good blend. I'm sure everyone knows what a good blend looks like these days. Back in 2011, it wasn't quite that way. Time for some black. So I'm going to go back in with that Kika Cosmetics Black. I didn't think I told you the number earlier. This is the number 14 high pigment wet and dry eyeshadow. It's just a sparkly black, but it is so pigmented. I love it. So I'm going to start this, trying to concentrate it on where the black cream liner I put earlier is, or was, is, was, where the black cream liner is. And wing it out, wing, 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 wing. As is always the case when you're using black, other colors can become muted. So it is time to go back in, add a little bit more of that Pacific Dream color. With that same angle brush, I'm going to go back into my silver that I put on the lid. And I'm just going to go between those two lines, sharpen them up a little bit, and also add that silver there. Extra, extra drama. So now both eyes are done. I'm just going to add a little bit more silver to the inner corner. And I also just used to wear a little bit of glitter there if I wanted to take this look to the extreme next level. But today, I'm not gonna do that. So as you can see, I've already done my eyeliner. So this is the kind of way that I would do my liner because now what I actually do is stick my lashes a little bit above my natural lash line to give a real uplifted effect. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So back in the day, there used to be this lash company, and I cannot remember what they were called. I want to say it was something like Elise or El Elise or something like this. And they had these lashes called C10 and they were beautiful. They were so full and big and long, but didn't look weirdly plastic cut off. This company went bust and those lashes no longer exist. And it's really frustrating. So the lashes that I'm going to put on today are these sort of... How can I explain it? They're just like eBay lashes, but they're really, really big and voluminous. This is kind of as close as I think I could get. And for the finished look, add a touch of hot pink lipstick, finish with a finishing spray after your lashes are done, and that is it. 
you have your 2019 remastered 2011 teal and real look. I want to thank you all for being with me throughout this long YouTube journey that I have. I don't plan to stop anytime soon. I'd love for you if you could share this video with your friends and give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and send me your pictures if you recreate this look. I can't wait to see. Check out my Instagram in the description box below and also check out my Patreon if you are so inclined. Remember where you've come from to help you pick your path on where you're going. And I will see you in the next video, beautifuls.